now the story. It's one of those universal truths, even this shall come to pass. Isn't that what they say? Jay was growing even more philosophical in his thoughts. It was the bumpiest and shortest ride in the van of dread. There wasn't any room to look around to take into view. He could, however, discern a scenic view of such that stretched with yards and yards of endless wire fences with razor seamings at the top. The van turned into their destination about 10 minutes max after they left the intake building. Here they are now, at the jail proper. They all shuffled clumsily out of the van and were all de shocked and de coughed. They were then lined, lined up right to the entrance to Durango. Durango. The name was nondescript on a directional sign that caught Jay's eye in the impending dusk. Jay had accepted all this, but the first night tried his resolve in no small measure. His transparent bag also contained his CPAP machine for fighting his chronic sleep apnea. He uses it on a daily basis to have his blissful sleep, which could otherwise easily be the sleep into the other side. He wasn't planning on sleeping into the other side during the night, especially not in jail. While the other three new inmates were automatically assigned cells, not so for Jay with the CPAP machine in the transparent bag, two different officers were assigned to them on arrival. And guess what? The Hilton has no bellhop. Surprise, surprise. The officers backed just as loud as all the previous ones. Line up, single file, keep to the wall and turn left at the end of the hall. The room at the end of the hall is the storage. Yeah, the room at the end of the hall is the storage. Cold as usual, quiet as a funeral. You all pick one mattress with one pillowcase and one sheet. We're talking razor-thin mattresses, lined in full leather that's sporadically torn here and there from frequent use. The wear and tear was in full bloom. They were clean, but old, damn old. He grabbed the thin bedsheet and thin cover spread, which is exactly the same thing with a thin bedsheet. Every night, for nine days, all he felt was that razor-thin sheet on that razor-thin polyurethane or whatever fabric it was made from. And through it all, all he could feel was the cold of jail everlasting on his memory, piercing his bones. And all, all he could long for was just his basic, simple, warm duvet in the comfort of his good, old king-size bed, one he has taken so much for granted way back home. This thought made him exceedingly sad and inconsequential. And there he stopped and replaced it. He replaced it all with appreciation. If wishes were horses, what do they say now? Beggars will fly. Everyone here wants out. Suck it up. Grab on, his officer muttered under his breath, waking him up from that daydream Pointing to the stacked mattresses, Jay grabbed one. He was surprised at the weight. He started trying to roll it up, trying to carry it. No such luck. Just drag it and follow me, the officer ordered. Jay obeyed. Convinced the mattress must weigh a ton, he followed the officer across what looks like a common area, huffing and puffing, all within the cell. The officer buzzed open a door that led into a pod. The pod is a shabby cluster of about ten cells. Ten cells that have two bunk beds in each of them, which means four inmates to each cell. In this cell, you can only walk sideways. Walking straight, you'll only be bumping into the iron bunk beds. That's how tight it is. Jay felt a certain amount of relief in this cell. Two reasons why. 
One, he was going to be alone in his cell due to the concession granted for his sleep apnea. And two, he was going to be alone in the entire pod of 10 cells because it was the only way they could source his machine to a power source. Yeah, an electric socket is luxury in jail. He was locked up and down. And this time around, the claustrophobia was in the mind, not as physical as the holding cell. After the officer had ensured the CPAP was working real fine, he left. Jay walked round and round the pod, checking out each cell, crying in his head for the subhuman conditions. Same vulgar graffiti everywhere. He will spare you the details of the messages, but you can imagine. He saw a solitary bug that crawled freely. The optic reminded him of the fact that the bug was free of worries. If he wished, he could crawl the hell out of jail, just like that, free as the wind. You and I, buddy, you and I, but you got one up on me because you can make it out just like that. At least if some mean human doesn't obliterate you with a single step. That night, as the springs pierced through the thin mattress, he sobered up with more Daimoku, staring at the springs of the bed above. The reverie didn't last long. A loud, persistent bang on the bunk bed woke him up rudely. He was scared like mad. He thought there was a riot about to bust loose, or was still, the cell leader was coming to baptize him. The long, scary shadow was cast in between the bunk beds and directly on him. He saw a huge silhouette, and that didn't help. He sprung up, bumping his head in the process. Oh, worry me. Oh, shit. He curses under his breath, squinting through the flashlight glare. Step out. Turn off your thing. Meaning the buzzing CPAP machine. Pack it up on your bag and follow me. Why, officer? Or, or can we do it in the morning? I was assigned here because I know everything. He snapped and shut up Jay. Do as you're told. You're an inmate, sir. Jay immediately started disconnecting his CPAP machine. A very long process in the poorly lit cell and a scowling flashlight monitoring his every move. He was sincerely and honestly totally pissed off. But there was nothing the hell he could do about it. In the cold of the night, he was walked across the yard to an entirely different unit. He knew there were inmates in the other nine cells in the pod. He could hear them snoring. <coughs> he could hear their adjustments. Their squeaky springs and their flatulence smelled and reeked. The officer passed the cord through the makeshift tiny opening under the door that led to the socket that was unreachable by Jay. There were mattresses here already. He hooked himself up and drifted off into a troubled sleep. Every hour, he was awoken by a flashlight in the cold part. He was later to learn that it's the office on duty doing his rounds. Is that why he's got to shine the light right into my eyes? You're in jail, bud. Enjoy the ride. Anyone that want you? First night out. Second day, action. There was a hard ass, cold aluminum picnic bench in the middle of the pod where inmates drifted in and out of. Believe it or not, there were books on that table. Books left behind by previous inmates. There was no want for books in jail. Pretty cool. There was an old, ironclad, totally dulled screen TV secured to the top of the corner walls. It had a remote control. It does not work. You watch one channel and you say thank you. Jay remembers watching a lot of Gunsmoke, Bonanza, cheap and old movies like King Kong, classics like James Bond. Pretty cool. As a matter of fact, that year, he caught the dullest Super Bowl ever on that dull screen TV. It was Patriots and Rams. Patriots whooped the Rams to single digits, 13 to three. 
was glad to get out the next day. I see you finally made it here. See the voice that was sitting down beside him on the cold ass picnic table. Well, I'll be. It's a dog. Jay was mind shocked. He did a fine job of hiding his thoughts, though. He was defensive and pretentious. After all, this is jail, man. Do I know you? He acted up. Weren't you the guy with a long name at intake? Yeah. As you can see, my name takes me places. Opens doors, he replied, trying some humor. Hi, I'm Dave. They both reached out and shook hands. I'm a doctor going through hell. And we all, you don't understand. My license is seized and suspended. I'm in an extreme DUI, aggravated. There's a traffic wreck. Sorry to hear that. I'm in an extreme as well, but no accident. Have you learned your lesson? Heck yeah. The real sobriety is in the mind, man. I had to hit the pulse button hard. In my mind. Now, with some luck, I can face a medical board ethical review in five years. Again, if I pass, I can retrieve a limited practice license. And then even with more luck and more fuck in another year, I can resit to the board exam, pass, and return to full-time practice. Percentage success rate for such scenarios? Zero. As he makes and holds up a zero sign with his fingers. But this doctor is determined to work it through. Wow. Can't believe the price. It's simple, man. Never break the rules. You're preaching to the choir. I'm 100% responsible for me being here. The new human revolution. The new human revolution. Is that what you're doing in here? Is that what we are doing in here? The doc said, jerking his head in the direction of Jay's book. Absolutely, doc. I relate, buddy. I relate. All of a sudden, began a stare. Major, major stare. All the entire pod merged into a single line, drifting out into the main area where the chow awaited them. It was well orchestrated. The other three pods went through the same motion. An overhead shot of the central merge occurring from four directions would be a filmmaker's delight. Come on. Let's go. The doc arched. It's only a meal a day, and it's shit. They call it slob, watery, tasteless, sodiumless peas, with a small loaf of bread half dropped in it, so it's soggy on the one side, and if you're lucky still, dry on the other side. You get an orange too. Somewhere in the watery pea soup is chopped up broccoli stems, not the florets, the stem all chunky, so you can chew on it like your entree. Leroy joins them on the cold picnic table. Cherry dude, full of life and stories. Said he used to be an RN. He's lost his license as well. He's a repeat offender. I only got downscaled from the medium cell to the Hilton yesterday. He enjoyed having an audience. And he went on and on about the gangs and culture in the medium security prison. He seems proud of his knowledge. It's either that or he just loves to hear his own voice. I couldn't eat. The doc made a suggestion. We can actually get some tuna from the vending machine. We were allowed to bring in $20 and make a tuna sandwich. Brilliant. That became Jay's stippled lunch and the oranges were always a delight as dessert. The games in the pod were at best childish, if not insane. Each night, at about seven-ish, several of the oranges that were near gone were kept as balls. And each cell rotated the members, kicking and passing the oranges by foot from one cell to the other without missing. Jay enjoyed it immensely. He liked soccer, and it kept him warm. It actually created a spirit of camaraderie, friendliness, and peace. He didn't like when it eventually burst and made a mess, though. 
Only him and the doc ever offered or cleaned that part. Toilets inclusive. Very clean toilets, though. The water velocity was like a vacuum cleaner. Swoops, and it's gone. Toothbrushes and toothpaste were provided by the officers right by the vending machines. In the main part, Officer Oliveras was right. You could call it the Hilton. Okay, okay. So, what's with the thinking things up to life? That's never been its uh, universe-giving gift or talent. That evening, as he went to collect his daily meds from his private locker, the officer on duty was Oliveras. Goodness, his angel in jail has made another appearance. Officer Oliveras. He spotted out her name politely but excitedly, to the amazement of the bystanders. Oliveras kept a straight face, characteristically looked right into his eyes and said authoritatively, Your number and full name? Uh oh, full pa, that didn't go down well. Jay thought, Jamil Otufale, he spotters. He opens his locker, he does his thing, takes his pills, and dares to wink at her, very, very involuntarily. She winked back, and his mind froze. Her youthful beauty, exuding warmth, her kind heart shining through. What, what is she doing in this environment? Making his heart happy. He took the risk anyway. Since he might never see her again, he said it. See you on the outside? Locking his locker shut, she taunts and graces him the pleasure. You never know. He never saw Officer Oliveras again. Not in there on the inside, not out there on the outside. Hope reigns supreme. Not from an amorous angle, but one of need to explain, to understand what she was doing so beautiful and nice in such a crazy opposite world and maybe be able to resolve and talk over that, over coffee, over tea. It wasn't to be, at least not at Durango. The days sped by fast, just as the angel in jail had said. Five days of work release and four of complete lockdown. The love of life was present with a doc and a couple of others with whom he talked, Aaron, the 22-year-old who could easily be his son with whom he shared Nietzsche's philosophy and thoughts. The fellow voracious reader, Brad. The playful Alexandria. Lude Pedro, who promised Officer Oliveira will never forget a night in bed with him. <laughs> All men of life in different directions and different ambitions, different circumstances too. But they were together, locked up in anger, and in some rare cases, realization. Before he knew what was happening, he was back on the outside, driving the Explorer with his transparent bag. At this point, Nichiren's voice ran through his mind. Though worldly troubles may arise, never let them disturb you. No one can avoid problems, not even sages or worthies. Drink sake only at home with your wife and chant Namyoho Renge Kyo. Suffer what there is to suffer. Enjoy what there is to enjoy. Regard both suffering and joy as facts of life. And now, the voice. Is a Yoruba adage which literally translated means how time flies. For Jamu John Otufale, time stood still as it often wants to do in a suffering phase. Why is it that when we're in a state of joy, time goes by so fast, but when we're in a state of pain or suffering, it just crawls? That is the relativity of time. A philosophy that boggles the minds of the most intelligent of philosophers. As humans, though, we can vouch for it being real. Just ask Jay. 
Even though the days rolled into each other, he wanted out. Fortunately, he did see with his third eye, meaning he thought and pondered and learned from it all. For him, it was more than just time spent. What became a comparison of circumstances, meaning Doc, again, a learning of his case is a moment of realization for him, as is meeting Aaron, the young man who believes he has a Moorish ancestry simply because he's black. That was a full class on its own. Leroy, the jailbird, who has obviously resigned himself to fate. What pops is his cheerfulness. It's, it's to get locked up for. <laughs> his stories of the medium and maximum prisons are almost heroic. It's weird, isn't it though? How being locked up together generates a, a kindred spirit? To Jay, it says a lot about how we're not utilizing the same exact spirit on the outside. After all, we're all locked up on this earth together. Where is the camaraderie on that level? He tripped into his faith again. How about meeting Officer Olivares again? Administering his drugs. Now, that's really for Chico's right there. His angel in jail hangs around all through and through. Ride or die. Even breaks ethical boundaries. You never know, she said. <laughs> Jay was just saying, she might not love him or anything, but hey, she ain't hating either. Just saying. She's a pretty young lady. It's probably just a respect thing. For now, he's okay with that, and her sparkly eyes and clean white teeth. What kept the man was the correct attitude. It was just a phase, if nothing at all. Let's understand that. This is just a face. That is just a face. Everything is just it's a face. Alright, 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 let's take a look at our spoken word of the week from a guy called JB. Its title is pedestrian, but not so for its depth. Freedom. Free as the wind that simply blows. Free as the sun that heats us all. Free to roam like the gypsy. Free to wander and wander. Free to be. Freedom to check it out. Freedom of choice. Freedom to learn. Freedom to love. Freedom to leave and leave in the vortex of well-being. Freedom to allow. No matter what to allow. My peeps of the week are my CTCA folks, whom I'm sure know themselves all too well when and if they hear this. Shout out to the Magic Kingdom, everybody, from Zion to Goodyear, celebrating life every way, every day. Thank you all. Ah, all too soon, my friends. Another week another episode. Until next week, it's been nothing but a pleasure to present you the final episode in the Dewey Wrangle series. Hope you enjoyed them all. Now, the something next is really cheerful for the human soul. It's a comment from a place close to the heart. The workplace. <laughs> Mischievous. You want to know the title? Okay, I'll tell you. It's titled 9 to 5. There you have it. 9 to 5. In another fortnight, watch out. It's a brand new story from the chronicles of Mr. Jamu, J for short.
Thanks again. It's been a story of voice from the voice bank with yours truly, Jimmy Banks. As they say in one of the several tribes I love, Toju Keep your character.